Is Damn. the light okay? Is it too dark? I can turn on another light. No, you're fine. I can see you. All right. We're live. Good evening. <clears throat> Good evening. Let me make sure. <laughs> space. <laughs> oh, yeah. We really are live. Okay, cool. <laughs> I know. The faces she makes. Okay. Like. Girl, this thing that popped up on my computer. Nothing. Good evening, y'all. It's Ramonica, Danielle, and Deidre. This we're like the um we're the work from home late night crew. We're the work from and, home late uh, night crew. Oh, so, hey, thank you so much for sharing. So we wanted to jump on this evening. Um, first and foremost, we are testing out a new new system. So listen, if there's someone who would like to, hey, what's going on? Uh, is it Celestine Wilson? What's up, sis? So if there's someone that would like to jump on with us at some point, you're going to be able to, we'll bring you up on screen. Just, you need to inbox me so that I can send you the link because we're testing out um, a new product. So I want to introduce my ladies to you. We got Danielle in the top corner. Say hi. <laughs> hi. Can you guys see me? <laughs> Why do I feel like we're on that new show that's on uh, VH1? Is it like Hip Hop Squares? Have y'all oh, seen? Oh gosh, like Hollywood Squares. It's something like that. Yeah. So they said yes, they can actually see you. So anyway, listen, we just wanted to jump on, test out the technology, but also here it was like pouring down this morning, and I just want to say that I was super duper deluxe thankful. What's up, Bridget? How are you? Lady D, what's going on? I just, I was like, I'm so glad I work from home. I'm so glad I'm an entrepreneur. And I thought, let me get my coach on. Let me get one of my leading lady sisters on with me so that we could come on and talk to you guys this evening about being an entrepreneur. Because some people went to work this morning in the pouring down rain. And can I just tell you, I was like so glad that I did not have to get up. I'm just saying, I was so glad I didn't have to get up this morning and go out in that weather. So, Deidre, what was yes. the weather like where you were? Well, I am in the DMV, which is the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area. So it was raining, yes, indeed, in the nation's capital. And so it was uh, it was chilly this morning, and it was dark when I went out because I do have to get up. I have a high schooler whose bus comes at like 630. It's not even light outside just yet. So it was a little rainy, but I didn't mind because it wasn't a cold rain. So I didn't mind going out in it so much, but as the sun came up, the rain diminished and the sun came out and it was an absolutely gorgeous day here in the DMV. Mm. So I loved it. Loved it. Well, they canceled school because we were actually, they actually thought that um, we were going to be under like tornado warning. So yeah. schools were actually canceled here today. So I was like, okay, super cool. Thank y'all for canceling school. I did not have to get up early. And thank God there were no tornadoes that touched down um, yeah, in this God. area. But, um, thank you, God. It was really very serious, that weather thing. But I'll tell you something. I was glad because I got to hang out with two of my sons today who are home during the day. One of the, he works, one of them works, but he had a day off during the week. So it was so cool to be able to hang out with the two of them while my other youngest son was at school. You have that flexibility to make that adjustment because you can spend time with each one of your children because they all have different needs. So when you know what they are, you can meet the needs. And then they called for a last minute orthodontist appointment for my son who's 18 who has braces. So I was able to run by, drop him off for 30 minutes, go do something else. So it's just the flexibility. I love it. I wouldn't trade this for anything at all. Nothing. I know. And listen, you know, people are used to, I know in the beginning it was a big transition because I was used to working with like a lot of people like every day. And by the way, if there's anyone who wants to jump on, because coach was like, look, I got something to do. If there's anyone that wants to jump on with us and chat no, with, us, man, man with the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Stop playing on top, coach, and share that chicken leg. <laughs> <laughs> so anyone that wants to jump on, just inbox me. And like I said, I'll actually send you the link. But in the beginning, it was a weird transition because I was really used to working with a group of people every single day. 
And so to go from that to being at home in front of a computer or being able to just roam around and do as you please on your time without having to ask anyone if you could do it, go and do anything, it was, <coughs> excuse me, it was a transition. And I'll never forget us talking and you were like, hey, do you want to do like this virtual workspace thing? And I was like, well, please tell me all about that. And so I just appreciate you like sharing that with me. And it was cool. I'll never forget. There was what, three or four of us, maybe four of us in that space where we were literally just working. And if someone had a question, you could just pause and ask another sister. Oh, Lord, Z. <laughs> He's in here. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. Z, I you need to come on and do some late night shenanigans. Oh my God, that girl is hilarious. I can't. I need to send her the thing. She is hilarious. Oh my gosh. But anyway, I'll never forget that. And I yeah. thought that was like the coolest thing. And it just goes to show that there's this thing where you can still interact with co-workers or your co-sister. <laughs> Have you gotten into any of her broadcasts where she's doing her shenanigans? No, I haven't. Oh, I'll have, get, I'll have to get in there though. I bet it's funny. Um, yeah. But you know, see. when you are an entrepreneur too, you're right. That was a really great point because you can tend to feel um, isolated or especially a recluse. And because I'm, I'm, an, I'm a total extrovert, so I have been. Uh, you can get in like a funk because you feel like you're recluse, and then while you love to stay at home you feel like you're staying in too much because I know one of my friends said, um, I wondered if something had happened to you because your car hadn't moved in like two days. I was like, wait a minute, you're coming over checking on me. Why don't they have to call the medical examiner or something? No, I'm okay. But I'm used to, you know, running in and out and going in and out like 15 times a day, but then it becomes the opposite. So you really have to develop some balance and make sure that you don't get lost in your entrepreneurship because for some reason it shifts your mood from time to time. And I know it's, it's, um, it helps me to get out into wide open space because I can be a lot more creative. But that's why I invited you to that workspace thing because you don't have to be lonely in entrepreneurship, but you can choose your coworkers. So that's why I love that Ramonica Gamble. She is the bull bomb. <laughs> hey, look who's back. <laughs> Girl, I took a trip. <laughs> this thing popped up on my computer and said... Um, it was a bunch of foolishness. <laughs> but Deidre, you know what? You're spot on. And Coach, you could probably like really tell us some stuff about this because you've been doing it for a while. But yeah, Deidre, you're absolutely right. Like I have gone, especially during the summer when my daughter is gone with my mom in Mississippi and I'm not getting up doing the school run or the school pickup. If I have food and beverage here, yes, I have gone like three or four days and did not leave the house. Car didn't move. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, yeah, wait, man. I'm going nuts. I need to like get out of the house for just a second. Right. Yeah, you can become a recluse and they also don't realize your mood starts diminishing a little bit and you think, I need to get out and connect with some people. I need some other energy other than mine. You know, not just virtual, but you have to connect and get in wide open space. Should we mute our mics or something? something that feedback, Coach? You got feedback? I don't hear it. I heard an echo. Mm -hmm. I heard an echo, Ginger. But one thing I can tell you guys is that um, speaking engagements is totally different. Like you're used to so much engagement with live platform. And then when you start the speaking engagements, you like, why ain't no hearts? Why ain't nobody saying nothing? <laughs> What's going on? And the first time it happened, I like stopped my speaking like, okay, look, y'all. You're going to have to work with me. Tap your desk or something because I'm used to hearing noise. That's I'm used no to fun. engagement, interaction. You can't just sit there and look at me like I'm going to pull a rabbit out of a hat. It's just so that part is just not going to happen. And so uh, that's one piece of it. But two is I've really become like a hermit. It is so hard and inconvenient yeah. for me to leave my house. Like the Obamas could be down the street and I'm going to be like, how long they going to be there? Because it's going to take me a minute to get dressed. 
<laughs> this is my live stream. <laughs> yeah. Take a photo and send it to me if I can superimpose myself oh my um, there. But it is just, come on now. A exactly. Exactly, Zakia. You have to like make them talk back to you because if not, it's super boring. Yeah. yeah like, I think I start off my when I'm speaking to someone outside of live stream now, it's like, hey, how y'all doing? Come on in. I want to welcome y'all to the broadcast. And I'm like, uh, does somebody have a snicker? Because I feel like I didn't just like spoke all wow. out of her somewhere. <laughs> but I tell you, in all that it is difficult, I will tell you that it's better than work. And yeah. why I push people so hard is because it doesn't matter what my day looks like as an entrepreneur. It's better than sitting in traffic. It's better than, you know, bosses and coworkers. And you have the autonomy to make your own decisions and literally do what you want to do. And I wouldn't trade, I wouldn't trade anything for this freedom. Yeah. And I want mm -hmm. like everybody to experience this freedom at least one time. I read a quote yesterday uh, by Mahatma Gandhi that said that once a person determines that they will no longer be a slave, mm -hmm. then they're free. Mm -hmm. um, they said He said that freedom and slavery are mental states. Mm -hmm. And so once you determine that I'm willing to do whatever it takes to not have to live that life, and I asked somebody in my class tonight, I uh, was asking them about their deadline, and um, they, they were kind of dragging their feet. And I said, well, if this were your job, wouldn't you have it done by now? And they said, well, either that or I would tell them what barriers I was facing. I said, I don't know what kind of job you had <laughs> that put up with barriers. Because my job what? wouldn't care if your car broke down, your kids sick, what your mom right. was sick, you had surgery. What you didn't make your deadline, what? I'm not trying to you hear jobs. Work. I'm not trying to hear any of that. They're not those trying to any of that. So your since you can't make bad. those excuses at your job, don't make those excuses in your business. That's so true. I mean, on everything, I can remember um, you. I don't know if you remember this, but like last summer, I called you and I was like, um, hey, coach, I just want to let you know, I'm going to go ahead and get me a job. I'm going back to work because... Like, I don't know if I'm like cut out for this thing. I don't know if this work at home thing is for me. I'm used to like hanging out with people and talking to people at work. And I'll never forget what you said. Fool, is you crazy? <laughs> like, when I, you said, when I need to talk to people, girl, I call y'all. <laughs> and ain't that what I do? Still to this day. Like, fool, you know what, what you doing? Yeah, and you know what's funny is that to me, I felt like I was in some funk that time when I called her too, and I was so upset. But I tell you one thing: what did I tell you, Coach? Did I tell you anything about some job? Show sure didn't. <laughs> she said everything. Ditcher <laughs> never brought up that J word, and when we got that phone, Ditcher's like, "Well, let me come get out here. I'm doing what I need to do." <laughs> Ditcher's like, "Uh, yeah, not going back to work." I mean, like no. literally kicking and screaming, you could not carry me. Yeah, it would be really, really hard. Like Weird. they would have to show up with like a couple of hundred thousand dollars and a signing bonus. That ain't enough. And they yep. still couldn't give me five days a week. I'd be like, look, I'll make a fool with y'all like Monday, one Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like eight to noon. Hey, yeah. with a company car. <laughs> with a company. No, I need a driver. Because at this point, I'm not even good in traffic. Girl, I went to drive somewhere the other day. You better get that sedan working. Girl, I can't even drive no more, y'all. It don't even work for me. Like, it just doesn't even work. <laughs> and then what I honestly, when I look at now, listen, the six-figure income was banging, okay? I'm just saying. But if you ever look, because you have some. Uh-oh, her sound went out. Your sound went out, Monica. Is that your microphone? Look at her. Mm -mm. Start on the gang signs. <laughs> okay, we now? Ain't now. We ain't now. But um, then it went right back out. They tripping. Come the on, devil Greg. is alive. Come on, Greg Bettis. Come on and join this club. You went back to work. Oh man, drag. Hey, can y'all? Yeah, that's a drag. That's like a super drag. Am that's I like, a, that's like a drag race. 
that really okay. it, yeah. We can hear you. Yeah, but like you look and you see those wages, and I'm like, do they not understand that they can work? It went out again. Yeah. Come on, say it ain't so, Harpo. No, y'all, this can't be. Carolyn, Carolyn Gray says she had to drive to Houston the other day. I almost had a heart attack. A heart attack. Can't nobody drive in that traffic no more. Oh, that traffic is wicked. I'm so glad. Can you imagine? I'm in Washington, D.C., up and down all these HOV hot lanes and all this other mess. I don't do traffic. To get caught up in traffic, I've had it. I did that for 25 years. No. No, you couldn't. I, don't I agree care. with you, teacher. I, I can't even, I can't even, it's only been two years for me. It was two years as of the other day. And I can't even wrap my mind, not only around going back, but I don't know why I went for so long. It Working is so inconvenient. And mm -hmm. it don't even take a whole lot to make up the money you was making at work. Number one, you're not spending as much because you were home with your refrigerator you ain't got nobody tempting you to go out to them fifteen and twenty dollar lunches. You back, bro? That's right. That's true. You spend a whole lot, and just just tolerating. I mean, you know, you definitely work with different personalities when you're an entrepreneur too. But you have more control over your choices of who you sure do. are. You know, and you don't have to work with everybody. Contrary to popular belief, you don't have to work with everybody. You know, and you can sort of really call, yeah, and and shape up your team the way you want it to be and you'll have some some challenges but that's okay but at least you're the one building it and it's your dream so you fool are those afro picks in your ear yes oh those are super fly yeah. you back row yeah my earring i <laughs> love those thank you yes those are my afro picks because you know when you're out and you have you wear your hair natural, they wonder what comes out of your mouth. But don't wonder, honey. You might see these Afro pics, but I know how to articulate. Okay, they get. Confused. I know that's right. You a solemn partner. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe you called me up out of my bed for this foolishness. <laughs> it was for real about going live tonight. Wonderful. I was. I didn't know what was going on, but I love y'all. I'm so glad we could do this. Thanks for asking me, Ramonica. That was super awesome. Girl, she was looking for the it. night owls, baby. Ooh, oh, yeah. For the and night owls. About 2 o'clock, we had like a 2 p.m., not a.m. Girl, start throwing up. Uh, look at that. She going to dance. Goodness, we cannot hear you. Oh, my wow. goodness. I wonder what that is. So I'm writing this new book. Call. I know because mm -hmm. you see, we got to talk, talk. You know this, right? I know you said you want to talk to me, but we ought to, we need to talk. Real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't forgotten. But the new book is called uh, the, <laughs> the 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 Quick Conspiracy. Are you back, Ramonica? I hope so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. The the silent partner have spoken. <laughs> Ooh, with the nice show. Anything, Anything can happen <laughs> at the night show. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so the, 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 the book is called The Job, The Quick Conspiracy. And it's the conspiracy to keep you working a nine to five. And the biggest co-conspirator is yourself. Yeah. Because you just don't think you can make it without that job. And you think it's so secure that they steady laying folks off. I'm looking at these layoff numbers from IBM and Citigroup and Sears. Walmart, even Microsoft run by the richest man in the world laying you off. Yeah, I'm like, Ooh, Nobody. uh -uh. Nobody's invincible. Nobody has any immunity. You can get laid off. They just buy out my insurance guy. He's been doing nationwide for 36 years and they just Not sold his company. I think he's on your side. He's <laughs> a hunk. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm on his side. He's distraught. He couldn't even write me a new policy the other day. He was so distraught. He has put Don't his effort. But that's the target. Those are folks with the target on their back. It's a shame. That is. The longer you see, it's an oxymoron nowadays. Mm -hmm. The longer you work, the more you make. And the more you make, the bigger the target on your back. Mm -hmm. And the less likely it is you're going to be able to go somewhere and get another job. Just like well, that. Well, the sad thing yep. about him is that he's not a go-getter. He's a one-track mind type of guy. I mean, he, I don't, he can't do anything else. Honestly, mm -hmm. he's that kind of person. Let me tell you he's something. Not a learner, I mean, he oh, I feel bad. 
I knew when I had my corporate job, I always knew that that would not be the place where I would retire from because it just seemed like everyone had an expiration date in their eyes based on one factor or another. And so my mindset was always get rid of them before they get rid of you. I know that's right. And I've seen it happen too many times. <laughs> I remember in the 80s, late 80s, early 90s, and I lived in, in California and they had General Dynamics. And at the time, General Dynamics, was their money was butter. Like that was the job to have. Yep. And I remember they had this big layoff and like the news was riddled with stories of men killing a whole family. Some of they weren't going to be able to make. What? Mm -hmm. What? You go off your family because of a job? Mm -hmm. And that's when I kind of started giving jobs like the side eye. Like it's like buses. I felt like another one is coming. Like, you know, you didn't catch that one. Catch that next one, you know. And I mm -hmm. just never understood. But here's here was here was the thing with me. I never connected making extra money to being an entrepreneur. Because if that's the case, then I've been an entrepreneur for like 25 years. I mean, I never connected catering here and there and making gift baskets and this and that. I never, I never connected the stuff that I did to make ends meet with being an entrepreneur. Wow. And you know what? I did. I've always been, I mean, I used to quit jobs. I don't think this, y'all don't laugh at me, but this is just the truth. My mother's alive. She tells you some stories about the job quitter. <laughs> I used, I never stayed on a job more than one year until I was in my twenties, y'all. But guess really? what? I had a top secret clearance. Yeah. I had a top secret clearance. I could type 75 words a minute. I could take any phone message and organize any meeting. I could go where I wanted to go. And I left the government and went private industry. My mother said, you are a fool. You are in the government. You have a secure job and you're going to walk out and leave your job. I was like, these people are crazy. I have a top secret clearance. So I'm in one room with all these people all day. They're like, could you get her the hell out of here with all that energy? <laughs> I drove them crazy. Oh, yeah, the government ain't got no energy. <laughs> <laughs> I read this story. I know I read this story about uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Uh, and, and this is another story about followers and how when he created the FBI, uh, he said he saw some pinheads. They went in them people's lockers and measured their heads. They had and got rid of anybody who had a head less than seven and a half. He no wanted them way. to look the same, sound the same, walk the same, act the same. And that's how jobs are. And yeah. that's how society is. Even though these jobs got us broke. <laughs> <laughs> look, look at Carolyn. Right, Carolyn Carol. say, watch it now. Miss <laughs> Carolyn, I mean, you the only one with your red bowl. <laughs> you, know, yes, you know what? Really, I always had something going on in the background. I me always too. did. What since I was 15, but see, I, me too, but I never added two and two that I could do that full time and oh, and, yeah. and 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 leave a job. I just thought that was like oh. extra money. I always made gift baskets yeah. and catered and cooked mm -hmm. brownies and cakes mm -hmm. but i i just never thought but the the That's trick true. is you you fighting to stay there not for a good existence you fighting to yeah. stay there to be broke they said the average mm -hmm. person can't afford a 400 dollars emergency without putting it on their credit card or borrowing it from a friend or family 46 percent of people ain't even got four hundred dollars for revenues saved up Mm -hmm. I they bet. I mean, the they ain't oh. doing the ghetto math, coach. They not. You can be free. It's always something. <clears throat> it's always something, and you can't. You can't ever seem to catch up. You just can never seem to catch up. So, and then too, you don't even like what you do. You don't even enjoy what you're doing. So, why are you doing it? You go in there every day. You go there mad because you're not happy going there. So, I mean, so why? Why not try some? But I, I just mean, think you know, it's a big burden. Digital, we was talking about that because we were talking, well, I was talking about uh, somebody watching my mom uh, mm -hmm. while I go yeah. out of town. <laughs> and I was watching uh, the, the news and saw what well, this woman was beating this, this older woman that she was uh, responsible for. And you know it couldn't have been me because I'd be back on the news. <laughs> oh, yeah. Back Remember the story we told you last night? Well, there's been a breaking <laughs> update. Let me update you. Update. Because somebody yeah. got to God for yeah. fighting it with my mama, you know. I, I'm gonna tell the, I'm gonna tell the police, don't even worry about looking old. We're gonna have a little street justice. But yeah, uh people are doing, doing crazy stuff out here. People are doing crazy stuff. 
And I would not leave. I mean, it just is hard. It really is. And when you're on your job, you can't really work at peace when you have an elderly parent or your grandma or your baby. People are out here doing crazy stuff and you don't know who it is. That's true. You don't know who it is. And I knew at 9-11, when 9-11 happened that I had a three-month-old and I was 35 miles away and I didn't know if I was even going to make it home that evening. I knew then that I wasn't going to be on that job forever. I, it took me uh, nine hours to get home that day. Ooh, your yeah, folks you out there walking. They had shut the subway down. Yeah, I was four. I was right. The subway station was right under my building. I was four blocks from the White House, but the 14th Street Bridge was completely closed, totally. And then even mm. after that, my traffic it took us two hours to get to work every day. Two hours because we had to drive right by the Pentagon. You know, it was destroyed over down that one side. But yeah, I, you know, I always had more than what my job, you know, the task that they had me doing. I always did more. I always had something going on outside because it wasn't challenging enough. It never was. But it was it was a job. And and I mean, I thought I liked it. I had some great bosses and stuff. But being an entrepreneur, there's something about the joy, <clears throat> even in spite of the challenges. There's something about the joy within that allows you to even be able to um, to absorb and work with the things that come. But you, it takes a level of courage, though, to be able to do it. You have to, I mean, because you're going to get battered by opposition and, and quote unquote haters and all that stuff. But that's why you have to know why you're doing it. And it, you have to be driven. If you're not a driven person or things scare you, you won't do well because if someone says boo, you're like, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing it. And maybe that's not what God want me to do. You know, stuff gets in your head, including you. And so you just start, you start feeling defeated. <coughs> but that's why you have to connect with people who have a stronger mindset and who can build you up and tell you, fool, what are you talking about? <laughs> like your mm. coach here. <laughs> yeah. well, we know what, you know, part of that though, Deirdre, is we carry each other. You know, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I just carry you guys. I feel like it's days I'm like, oh, shoot, here we go. What am I going <laughs> to do about this? You know, I, I it's everybody gets stuck. That's true. I mean, that's just the truth of the matter is that we've all lived this life so long that mm -hmm. I would be a fool. And it's levels to this stuff. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I made it over the next level, but it's another one looming mm -hmm. at me. And what do I do about this level? And then the next <laughs> level and then the next level. And so it's yeah. levels to this stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, I push y'all for a little while. You push me for a little while. And that's how we make it. Mm -hmm. You know, but you can't be afraid overall. You have to be you have to be. Driven you know, but you got to be afraid of the right things. Mm -hmm. You know, at some point, you just got to say, I will not continue to be broke. And whatever that looks like, I'm good. When I did a whole rant on uh, Facebook Live and Periscope earlier about opening your mouth, it's money in your mouth where you open it. And it's greatness in your hand where you open it. And at some point, are you that prideful or that scared of what other people are going to say about you that you won't go get your money, but it's okay for McDonald's and it's okay for, you know, BMW and Mercedes-Benz and Walmart. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be just like them when I grow up. People have people have a problem with, um, they feel like they have to keep apologizing for stuff. And Lord knows that used to be me, but I am not going to do it anymore. I'm not apologizing for anything at all. And when you, just like you said, when you ask me how much it is, that is how much it is. And I'm saying it with confidence. I didn't sound like I was wavering, did I? Oh, yeah. You better. It is a mindset. I mean, I always think about um, Mercedes Benz, BMW, um, any of those high end brands. They don't apologize. You don't, you don't yeah. go into their lot. And they say, oh, we're so sorry. Mm -hmm. We don't mean to charge you that much for that 750 Oh, we don't mean to charge you that much for the Cadillac Escalade. We apologize. It's like, hey, get in where you fit in. Listen, do you want this car or not? Like, Because our hands are open to receive it if you're willing to find a way to get it. And here's the thing. Right. When people want something, they find a way to get it. So I can remember That's what I first heard. That's why I'm... I agree. I agree with Monica. Okay. Yeah. Cause that's just what it is. And I heard someone, where did I hear this today? I don't know what I was listening to. And the lady was like, sometimes when something is lower priced, 
people think something's wrong with it. You know, there's been all these different studies. You know, like um, I heard uh, there was a study about uh, it was a grocery store. They had grapes in cellophane wrapping, and they had grapes that were just sitting out. The exact same or two, and people literally would ask the clerk, "Hey, what's the difference?" And the clerk would say, "Oh, well, these are just wrapped, but they're the exact same grapes, and these cost two or three dollars more." And each and every time, people went for Everybody the ones that cost more. more. Yeah, it was that perceived value. People are just, it, human behavior is just a trip. And that's all the reason why you don't change what your price and what your worth is. I've learned that the hard way for many, many, many years. And now I'm not going to do it. Mm -mm. You're putting things like a dollar and 50 cents above cost. What? No, nope, no. We're doing 850 above. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you have to just figure it out and, and talk to people because it, it is shocking to some people because they're just used to haggling all the time. I mean, yeah. it, that's tiring. You know? mm -mm. Because what you know when you invest in something and you take what it's worth and add to it, oh, you add value to it. Just like when you buy a house, you don't let it go down raggedy to the gutters fall off. You keep the roof repaired and you, you, know, you do your lawn nice and stuff like that. So people just have to get their minds right. Well, they and I don't have time to be mad and folks. The benefit is going to be to them on the back end because you're looking at what you got to pay up front, not thinking about what you're going to gain on the back end. So you're just letting this short term thinking really just like keep you stuck and in a circle. And if you never get out of that mindset because you're fearless, you refuse to be bold, you refuse to hire a coach, you refuse to hang around people that are positive. I can't tell you how many people I meet and or talk to and they just get stuck in their circle like. Their friend said, I can't believe you're doing this or that. And then the next thing you know, they're out the race. Like they are afraid to be the outliers in their group. And I'm like, but you're grown. So why are you still caught up that's and the, worried about what somebody's saying? Monica. Because they were conditioned that's to believe that stuff. brainwash. Yeah. yeah. And as they're long conditioned as to nobody believe. has anything. Yeah. See, because if you look around, and, everybody got almost the same amount of stuff. Ain't nobody got no whole lot more than anybody else. No. And the thing is, like, they think it's a respect thing. You, I can say no to my mother. I don't have to agree with her. I'm grown. I'm my own woman. She was hers. And my, my family believed in nine to five jobs. Y'all just go ahead. Because I definitely, oh, I got talked about and called all kinds of great things. I didn't even care. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, I knew that if I'm in a work environment that I'm not happy in, it's not going to be nice. <laughs> it's just not going to be good. And uh, so what are folks' that, comments though? What a comments? Ain't no y'all stop y'all still there? Yeah, they I, I see that. I don't see them. No, I keep pushing up. Oh, those are some of the ones that came up like a minute ago. I just I see people in the screen, but I they don't didn't know, got but I was, If, if y'all was on Zoom, I would put the camera on pause and go fix me something to eat, but y'all not. Oh, wait a minute. You didn't eat, we thought there. you had bought it. Chicken, coach. We thought you had gone to eat your chicken. Okay. Go to go somewhere and eat. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Christina says she here. Okay. You just wondering. You just somewhere. I don't know. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but, you know, people are conditioned. And I, you know, I had to learn that too as an only girl. My mother just wanted me to be like her, but I wasn't like her. I was the opposite. My mother was a shy person, I was an extrovert times five. And she used to shush me, be quiet. But when people are conditioned that nine to five thing, they were serious about it. And if you did anything different from that, oh, you were, there was something really wrong with you. But So I had to be prepared to go against that, though, and respectfully declined her plan for my life. And you know what, Deirdre, that's a good point. But, you know, it's so even different even now. No one has any excuses now. You want to build a platform? You can do that. You got social media. You got live stream. You can literally be international in the blink of an eye. <laughs> so you all, I, it always begs the question, what's your excuse? Yeah, back then, right. you didn't know who could build your website. You didn't know how to get a book published. When I published mm -hmm. my first book, it was so hard. Yeah. It was so hard. Nowadays, it's click, click, click. Mm -hmm. When I got my first logo, my first logo cost me like 500 bucks. 
Because mm -hmm. it wasn't no fivers and no gurus and no all of these right. places for you to go. So I had to go to a creative design artist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had to build my logo in layers. The book, it was my yeah. book cover. It cost 500 bucks. And so you had to really want it back then. Nowadays, you can build your business for pennies. So my question to you is why are you going to work tomorrow? Because I'm not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I love it. Listen, there's y'all know I love my cider beer. My friends call me a bougie beer drinker. So it, especially now, you can't tell me nothing. When I take that laptop, um, Saturday morning, I was outside on the on the uh, balcony with my laptop, a strawberry cider beer, and some uh, crawfish uh, <laughs> pot pie. And were some days on my lunch break, I'm like, hmm, I feel like a cider beer to get my creative juices flowing. I'm like, oh, wait, I can really do it, and it's okay. So, um, yes, there is nothing. Yes, D, there is nothing like it. I mean, I I'll take the whatever comes with it. Like I just, I literally saw someone post, I'll work 80 hours for myself than to go back and work 40 for someone else. Like I don't I want to work to go. with me. Hello, I'm, I don't want to do it. I just don't. No, I'm, not, I'm not equipped anymore. No. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, mean? Like, I, I despise a suit. I'm sorry. Now tomorrow when I go to my chamber stuff, because that's the city I live in. That's how we roll. Like, I'm going to put on a jacket tomorrow, but it feels so uncomfortable. Don't it feel restricted? I'm like, I gave that life up. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm sorry. I've seen people in suits, and I was like, dang, that's how I used to look. And I just started laughing, you know, because it's so formal. It is so formal. Y'all know what I have a problem with now? I love dressing up. I really do. Cause I like I have, but I don't want to put on a suit. Singled out loud. <laughs> it's like <laughs> we got our shirt sewn. <laughs> Y'all know what I have a problem with now? I have a problem with what? shoes. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I don't have on any shoes. Yeah, I I'm hate shoes. You, I ain't got no shoes on either. <laughs> you know what? Because <laughs> I used to say, this is the only job I ever had that I made so much money with my shoes off. Right. Exactly. You got no shoe. You have on flip flops until you get tired. Okay. Find me a cracker. I love y'all. You finna go? Okay, Deidre. Anybody want to come on with us? I, I, where is what's her name? Um, I get out of here. It's almost twelve o'clock, and I need to go in my room because I forgot my son's asleep too, and I'm out here talking out loud. Oh, girl, I'm sorry. Well, listen, okay, y'all. It's been it's real. real. It's been huh? real. What'd you say? No, go ahead. We off. Mm -hmm. Um. No, yeah, I was like, fun. we're just 32 folks on here now. I said, where does Zakia go? Because, man, I would love some of her humor. She is hilarious. Yeah, I, love I, walk I know. Walk I if I turn my camera off, can I turn it back on, like with the Zoom? Yes, you can. 